Okay, now that we have covered the first five presidents, we are going to cover the growth of this country that we have fought for and won. So following the War of 1812, we have the age of the common man, Jacksonian America, so this was in the 1820s. Um, there was a heightened emphasis on equality in the political process for adult males. Um, so get all males to participate, not just the rich white ones, or, okay, I'm sorry, get all white males to participate, not just rich white males. And then also increased voter participation, get people out to vote, same things we go through today. There's also the rise of interest group politics. So we would call these lobbyists today, like they're focused on uh, oil pipelines or solar energy or like, so those are, those are interest group politics. And then also sectional issues. Remember back to the Missouri Compromise where North versus South, slave states versus free states. Um, there's also a changing style of campaigning. Uh, before it was all campaigning to the rich, white, educated males. Now it's campaigning to the common man. So we're expanding democracy under Jackson. The voting requirements in the early 1800s, in 1800 it was you needed to have property to do it. Now it's more do you pay taxes? Or are you just white and male? So voter turnout from 1820 to 1860 grew exponentially, as you can see in this graph. Jackson eliminated the previous property qualifications, so this greatly increased the number of qualified voters. Prior to the election of 1828, the majority of American people had been satisfied to have the aristocrats elect their president, but now they want the common man. Also under Jackson, you have the spoils system. So once elected, he started using it. And it was a system where you reward your supporters by giving them government jobs. Oh, hey, you voted for me? Great, I'm gonna give you a job. Now we also have new political parties. Remember, the Federalist Party disappeared after that whole Hartford Convention where they talked about seceding from the Union. Um, they kind of went strongly downhill. Um, so to replace it, you have the Whigs and the Know Nothing Party. Um, so these are two different political parties that oppose the Democratic Party. The Whigs were very similar to the Federalists in beliefs, and then the Know Nothings were kind of middle of the road, but they frequently said, I know nothing, and that's why they started to be called the Know Nothing Party. We are moving west during this time. So American settlers moved westward into the Midwest, Southwest, and Texas. They wanted economic e opportunity in the form of land to own and farm, something that didn't exist on the East Coast. Now, the creation of the cotton gin and other farming techniques, the reaper and stuff like that, all those creations in the late 18th, early 19th century helped this westward migration because it made it easier to farm. We called it Manifest Destiny, and this painting is called Manifest Destiny. It is the angel of God passing through and saying, look, I am leading these farmers out into the West, into the wild, wild West to expand our country. It is God's will that we are expanding. Um, so you can see from 1840 to 1860 the huge spike in overland immigration to the West. Um, so that is amazing for westward growth.
Um, the Oregon Trail was also a big push at this time. If you ever played the game, the Oregon Trail, that's what this is about. People were moving out to Oregon in order to get land. major canals that existed in 1840. This was a big thing, big push part of Clay's American Improvement Plan. Um, there are lots of canals that help you move through these rivers to get further west, which helped us out quite a bit. All these canals still exist and are still in use today. Railroads also, you can see how heavily developed the northern railroads are and how little developed that the southern railroads are. Think about this and this will come back to bite the south when it comes to the Civil War. Now, with westward movement, the growth of railroads and canals helps the growth of the industrial economy. It helped us move our products quickly. Um, and it also supported the westward movement of settlers. Now, with westward movement and economic development, you've got American migration into Texas, which led to an armed revolt against Mexican rule and a famous battle at the Alamo. So the band of Texans fought to the last man, literally the last man, against a hugely superior force, and they lost. But their eventual victory over the Mexican forces brought Texas into the Union. First, it was its own state or was its own country and then it became a state for us. That's why it's called the Lone Star State. Um, so the Texas Declaration of Independence. Remember the Alamo. The Mexican War took place from 1846 to 1848, um, and that was what the Alamo was a part of. So Mexican War and Mexican Session. So the American victory in the Mexican War during the 1840s led to the acquisition of an enormous territory. It included the present day states of California, Nevada, Utah, Arizona, and parts of Colorado and New Mexico. That's a lot of land. Um, so the political cartoon is on the left, the Mexican Eagle before the war, all feathered and standing tall and got his stuff. And then the Mexican Eagle after the war is plucked and lacking quite a bit. So you, if you look at this map, you can see the amount of territory that we got in the Mexican session in 1848 and 1850. I mean, we got the majority of what we have today in the Southwest from that. California Gold Rush was going on in 1849. That's why the San Francisco 49ers are known as the San Francisco 49ers. It's talking about 1849. There was a huge amount of people moving out to California because gold was found. So they were like, oh, heck yes, I'm cashing in. I want my gold. There's also, looking at the map, you see all the territorial growth to 1853. If you look at the map, we have most of the current United States 
in territories and states at this point in time. That's a huge deal that in under 100 years we have taken over the continent. So the impact of westward migration on American Indians, also known as First Americans, um, the manifest destiny, if we are taking their land, what do you think they're doing? So the impact, they were repeatedly defeated in violent conflicts with settlers and soldiers, which we were taking their land. And then they were forcibly removed from their ancestral homelands and then they were moved into reservation. Um, so they were forced to march far away from their homes in what was known as the Trail of Tears when several tribes from the Atlantic coast were moved into the Oklahoma and Midwest states. Or they were confined to reservations in their current states, but they still had to give up their own land. So we have this awful history in America of defeating and taking their land when in reality we are just being greedy and selfish. <laughs>